All right, welcome again. Today we are doing the last video on the cyber, or not the cyber defense, actually confusing me all the time, cyber defense. No, the junior penetration tester pathway. Today is the last video on this pathway and it's just done. You have gone all over the modules, all over the rooms and you have done all of the tasks. Today is the last video. I'm gonna do Purpose Suite, Intruder and other modules. The extender is not much of a hassle. You can just go over extender. There are no questions to answer. Read through the readings and understand or learn about extender. It's just to develop modules and add extensions to Perp Suite. Now, to this video, I'm going to focus on intruder and other modules. So basically, deploy the machine. I'm going to save you the time for all these tasks. I'm just going to explain in a brief what is intruder, how to use it, what kind of payloads, and we will do the last four challenges. The same with other modules okay so it's time we take this to the right and start the practical work okay so the best way to learn as you know is by doing so we're gonna navigate to the target in here uh, go to proxy make sure the intercept is on Okay, that's fine. Now let's turn on the proxy so that Perp Suite is our, you know, uh, the proxy that we will use. Perp Suite using Fox Proxy. And now it's on. Now, whatever I request I send, it gets intercepted by Perp Suite. That's fine. Okay. All right. So, in today's video, the concept is or the topic is Intruder. So, most of you know that Intruder is closely connected to the proxy. In order to use the intruder, you have to intercept the request with the proxy and right click and send to intruder. I know most of you know that, but we just need to make two minutes for those who are just getting started and teach them how we can do this. So say we want to intercept or send something to the intruder. What we can do here, we can just send uh, a request. Uh, all right, so make sure the intercept is on send a request to the target, go to the proxy section, intercept, make sure the request is here, right click, and send to intruder. Now go to intruder, we have the, um, as you can see, the information about the targets populated in the boxes here, the IP and the port. Now what can we do with the intruder? So basically in intruder, you can do multiple kind of web application penetration testings. The first, first of which is, you can conduct some uh, uh, credential stuffing. You can con conduct brute force attacks. You can conduct um, fuzzing. All kind of application testing. You can just do that with Perp Suite Intruder. All you have to do, just right click and send your request. Now, the example today that I am going to talk about uh, is actually to, you know, guess the username and password. So basically we have this target here. I'm gonna ignore the request, this one, off. So now I'm gonna go to slash support slash login. So now we have a form. We have, as you can see, this is testing form. It's not a real form. It's not connected to any real website. It is just connected to a testing lab. So now we have this form, we have username and password. Now our job here is to use Perp Suite Intruder to find the correct username and password. Now that's an application of using the intruder. What we do here, we need to do one thing. We need to type an example username and example password. Go to proxy, make sure the intercept is on and send the request. So our request is intercepted. Now this is an, an example. Let's take a look at that. Right click and send to intruder. So now we have this. And as you can see, we have three tabs. The more requests you send to intruder, the more tabs you will have over here. Now, because the only tab we will work with is tab three, I'm gonna click X on the other tabs. We don't need these anymore. So we have this one. Now the target is defined, that's good. Now we go to positions. In the positions, you see your request that you previously sent to intruder, right? And you see here we have um, two payloads. As you can see, 
uh, the intruder actually it does the job for you so what it does actually um, you see the uh, the test and the admin are highlighted for you as the potential positions as you can see the seal the seal uh, crows these silk crows are used to highlight the positions where your payload will go so now purpose by default tries to make a guess of what you're trying to test and Purpose Suite just does or puts silk rows on the expected uh, parameters or the expected whatever things you would like to test. In our case, username and password. And that's indeed right. We would like to test the username and password. We would like to test the strength of the password of this form. So uh, Purpose Suite has done the job for us here. Now, if you are not satisfied or or this is or this is not the or the the parameter you would like to test what we can do here we can just uh, highlight the parameter or the value with the silk rows go to clear and clear now this parameter or the password is no longer under the test of uh, perf suite now if you would like to highlight or add a parameter for testing you can highlight the parameter or the value and click add silk rows so that's how it's done all right, let's go over the attack types. We have a sniper, we have battering ram, pitchfork, and a cluster bomb. So a sniper is attack type where it it takes one payload set. So if you go to payloads here, now let's let's say I want to go with a sniper. If you go to payloads, as you can see, I have the option of only setting one payload set. A payload set is a word list or a file that contains your payloads, right? An example would be a word list. A word list file is called a payload set. So basically, as you can see, as you can see, <laughs> as you can see, as it's a pronunciation mistake. So as you can see here, we have one, only one payload set we can use. And that's the mode or the default mode of, oh, sorry, go to positions. And that's how you use sniper. You only have one payload set. So basically sniper, what, what sniper does, actually takes let's say we loaded a word list here now every word in the word list will be replaced with the username and password and unfortunately because we have two positions right username and password um, I wouldn't go with a sniper because sniper actually is it's good only if you have uh, I mean let's say you have small word list right and you want just to try every possible combination in the word list with the username and password. Uh, that's how it's, that's how it works. So let's say let's take an example. So if you go to uh, intruder, and if you load the list here, let's take an example list. Uh, go to passwords. All right, let's select anything from here and load. So, oh my God, no, not this one. We need something simple just for the explanation or demonstration purposes. And that's only not what we want. So if you want to set the payload list, we can click on load and here we load a file. Or if you have something that you have just copied previously, we can click on paste and it will paste the payload set or the uh, payloads here in the box. Now, Purpose Suite is working on loading or importing the list. Seems like the list is uh, big. I'm not going to use this list. I'm just trying to uh, demonstrate, guys, how this works. So, see here we have. These are the word lists. So how in, in the sniper mode, how these word lists or how these payloads are used. So basically, let's take the first example. So one, two, three, four, five, six. In the sniper mode, the first word list, uh, the first word, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, will get injected in the admin, right? So the first try will be one, two, three, four, five, six, and the password stays the same. So what actually sniper does, it is just take each position from here and substitute each payload into it in turn. All right. So each payload here is substituted 
with each position in turn so the first thing all the payloads here all the words will be substituted for uh, for the username the password stays the same and then the next round the every payload here will be substituted with the password where the username stays the same so sniper attack works good if you have let's say small word list or or if you know the username if you are sure that the username is admin right then you're gonna clear this and you're gonna only select the password for your testing and then you would go for the sniper mode which would go much faster so if you go to payloads now every single word here will be substituted for the uh, password as a password and upon successful attempt you will get a different response length we will touch on that after we launch an attack now that's how the sniper mode works so again the sniper word works with one payload set meaning that one word list and it substitutes every word with every uh, parameter or every uh, you know position in turn so it's best you use the sniper mode if you know previously the username or if you previously know what it is or if you are testing one parameter it's good for testing one parameter or it's good for testing two parameters but you need to know the username or we need to know one of them just because it's gonna take time just to you know go over these two uh, parameters and replace every single word list with them especially if the word is big you know it's gonna take some time so my ideal scenario here since I don't know the username I don't know the username right so I'm gonna ju just add and sniper mode is not for me in this scenario now the next mode is the battering ram now the battering ram as you can see we have two payloads right it will take each payload if you go to payloads now see now we have all also one payload set so in battering ram it's kind of similar to sniper mode you have to use only one payload set uh, but the difference is it's going to take each payload from these and substitute it into every position at once what does that mean it means that the first payload here is one two three four five six it's going to take one two three four five six and put that as a username and as a password that's how pattering gram works now as you can see pattering gram will take less time than a sniper mode than the sniper mode because i told you guys because as you can see the payload the same payload gets injected as username and as a password at the same time so you can try the battering gram if you um, expect that the form uses the same username and password to log in right or if you are testing one parameter again this is not what we want for this scenario because as you can see we don't know there's a name we don't know the password so we have to use something more flexible and more you know uh what is this? Pitchfork. So the pitchfork, if you go to payloads now, it allows me to select two payload sets, right? So two payload sets are allowed into pitchfork, which means this is kind of close to what I want. I don't know the username. I don't know the password. So I need two payload sets, one for the username and one for the password. Now, into pitchfork, uh, you most likely to use pitchfork actually if you if you don't know the username and password if you are testing two positions the pitchfork uses one payload set per position right and iterates through them all at once for example let's go to payloads now so we have one payload set we have one here now let's select another one just for demonstration and uh, let's add something not too big we don't want to make perp suite complain about overloading the <laughs> memory consumption so let's go to something less set lists discovery passwords twitter band okay now what's gonna happen pitchfork will take the first payload which is one two three four five six put that as username and will take the second payload from the second list which is zeros and put that as a password so as you can see pitchfork takes the payloads from your lists and subst substitutes them simultaneously 
at once so yeah it is on the list we can try pitchfork pitchfork works for this scenario now what about cluster bomb the cluster bomb is the more advanced version of pitchfork so in cluster bomb again i have two payload sets we can use two payload sets actually we can use up to 20 but in this example <coughs> we can use two payload sets now what's gonna happen here say we have the first um, payload set which is suppose it's for usernames and the second one is for passwords now what's gonna happen in cluster bomb the first one is username right it's gonna take one two three four five six put it here and it's gonna make a stop on the username now it will try all of the combinations in the second payload set against the first username from the first list so it's gonna try every single combination of the two lists right for example the one two three four five six let's assume it is the username right it will get tested against all of the payloads here as passwords and the second round will be for skiffy skiffy will get tested for all of the payloads in the second list as passwords so on and so forth That's how cluster bomb uh, works, and it's the ideal scenario for us in this example. All right, now uh, for the challenge, for the challenge, we're gonna select two payload sets. We're gonna select, go back to desktop. So in the challenge, you are given two payload sets. You can download them from the task files. Uh, where is home? Okay, home is here. So, first is for usernames. Uh, let's clear that. And the second list for passwords. Yeah, I know there is one password. Let me tell you why there is one password. So, if you go now to the challenge, this is the practical example. Okay? Now, if you don't know the task files, you will see the username and password, uh, the, the, the list of the usernames and passwords in two files as I, as I have shown you guys. Now, the, the question here is to, is to find the, the exact credentials for the login form. Now, why I have omitted all of the passwords in the password list? Because it, it took so much time to find the right credentials. And I don't want you spending that time on that so I just put the right password here, all right? And I put here the list of the usernames and I'm gonna use the cluster bomb. So now we can see all of the payloads are set. Let's talk about other, other, other uh, options here. So you have payload processing, right? So payload processing, if you want to add um, something to apply on all payloads, for example, if you click on add here, you see you have rules these rules apply on every payload so for example if you want every payload or every password to be uh, prepended or appended with a word with a regular expression you can use that here so whatever you want to apply with the payloads you can you, you can define that in here for this scenario we will not do anything resource pool again, we're not gonna use that because it is related to the perp suite professional options not for now everything is good okay so now we click on start so now as you can see the combinations are being uh, tried and attempted against the form now all the time monitor the length of the response when you notice a different length than the regular uh, the other uh, responses you, you you can you can make uh, a conclusion about what actually what happened so basically all of the responses here are of length 673 if you get something like 300 or 305 600 505 whatever right we know damn sure that this response contains something different than other responses so it would worth the try until so now everything is the same now i'm gonna save you time uh the exact username and password is m dot 
Rivera and the password is let me in one. Okay, now let me go to proxy and put that off. Yeah, so see here we have a response that is different in length. The username is m.rivera and the password is let me in one. So it is worth investigating why these combinations triggered a different length. So let's go now. Type m.rivera and the password is let me in one. And actually you guessed that. These are the right credentials for the form. Now that is not everything about intruder. This is an example of, uh, let's say in a YouTube friendly way, application form testing or password strength testing. We don't want to say the word cracking or these kind of things. These, these are buzzwords. We don't want to use them. So now I'm gonna click on stop. I've got what I want. Thank you very much, discard. Okay. That was one example of using the perp suite intruder. Now let's go now to the other example. So if you go here, it's a challenge. So in the challenge, you need to find the flag. All right. So in the challenge here, if you go back, now after you have logged in, uh, you have you see we have tickets, six, five, seven, seven. Every ticket represents a request sent by someone, right? They need support, so every support request is assigned a ticket number. When you click on the ticket, you see information about the submitter, the email, and what did they want when they submitted the ticket. So if you look at the URL, we have the structure, support, ticket, and there is a number, six. Now what about if you are um, a curious person and you want to take a look at all of the support tickets? not only your support tickets so here we have seen or we see the support tickets we are uh, we assigned right or we are assigned to now what if you want to see other support tickets right right we want to see support tickets of other people so how can we do that of course we can do that through something called the fuzzing but we have first to identify where to fuzz and find the location of the fuzzing so in the example, we have to define the pattern for it. The pattern is, as you can see, support, ticket, and the number of tickets. Now what if we change this one to, let's say, 50? You see, there is no ticket with this number. Now what if we go over a big uh, list of numbers and we try them against this uh, parameter here? Of course, at the end, we will get some responses, right? And we will be able to see some uh, tickets of other people if there is no input validation and in this example because this is a lab uh, there is no input validation so I'm gonna use intruder now I'm gonna send an example request so let's go back make sure the intercept is on send the request all right so I have the request here let's right click and go to intruder intruder okay so go to positions now as you can see here um perp suite has marked the cookie as the payload of of a choice but actually this time perp suite has made the wrong guess we don't want to test the cookies although we will test the cookies in the upcoming scenario but we will not do that now so i'm gonna clear okay now what we want to test here is this number or this parameter the ticket number we add okay so since now we are testing a single parameter right sniper is the perfect choice for us we save time we save effort and we save the weight so now we go to payloads and select a word list now we're told by the challenge owner that uh, a perfect word list would be a word list that consists of numbers between 100 and 1 and 100 so if we don't want, if we don't find this word, or if we don't have it, we have we have to we have to generate it. So we can use crunch for that. So we type crunch, and we select uh, the minimum and the maximum. The minimum is one number, and the maximum is three numbers. And we select the pattern. So since we are counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
So we type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we output that to a word list called num. Nums.txt. Now let's examine the nums. Some of these numbers you will want to throw out, right? You don't want them. Now what you want here? Um, nope, not 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 the thing. What you want? Okay, let's take. Actually, we need to remove the ten here and put zero. V one. That's how this plays out. Cat num v one. Okay, let's let's open that in the editor. Nums v1. Where is the nums v1? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, and we have zero here, and it continues all the way like what we want, right? Except some numbers like the thirty, the forty is not here. We can add them manually. But this is what we want for now. So let's take this one or this word list, these numbers only. Go to Perp Suite, click on Paste. Just add one here because we skipped the one. Add 10, 20, 30, 40. 50, 60, 70, 90, uh, 80, and don't forget the 100. All right, so now if you examine the word list, all of the required numbers from 1 to 100 are here. Now you can start the testing. Again, uh, I want to save time. Let's can click on start the attack. If you have purpose suite, um, you know, purpose suite, the community edition is going to take time to, time to complete all of them but let's take a look here so you see we have the length of the response we have we monitor what what constitutes a different length so we have the first one we have this one which is six ticket number six has different response length let's examine ticket number six yeah actually ticket number six is our ticket we don't need we don't need this let's go over the others now until up until 28 there is nothing different let me um, put this one on yeah put this off back let's see here now I know th I know the right I know the right ticket number but I just wanted to know the process that's why I just uh, made this to go all right all, all the status indicate 404 except this one which is six our ticket now you, you're gonna keep the testing right and you make sure that the tickets that you will select for your answer have status code of 200 and of course different response length aha uh -huh, we have different one ticket number 47 type 47 here santa i would like to register a complaint i want to make sure that these are not my tickets let's go to uh, go back go back go back so my tickets are these are my tickets 47 is not my ticket so i was able now to see tickets of someone else again we'll see what we have we have ticket number 57 57 is our ticket no problem we don't need this so until now you have guessed a ticket of someone else which is the only ticket here uh, the number is 47 and you will continue all the way till this finishes. I'm gonna stop this, save time, and then the one that is, or the one that contains the flag is 83. This is your flag. All right. Now, let's talk about the extra mile. In the extra mile, there are no required um, questions to answer but we're gonna go over the process 
<coughs> so let's take this to the right now so we have gone over two scenarios the credential stuffing or password testing and the second one was for fuzzing now the third scenario with with using purpose fit intruder is by you know testing cookies and login tokens now um, actually i was planning on doing this but actually i i'm gonna i'm gonna leave this for you guys because one time i made a video about this and it was blocked by youtube so I don't want this video to go down because of this. So I'm gonna leave this readings for you guys. Read through this uh, task to ask 12. It will teach you how to, you know, test session cookies and login tokens. Uh, in brief, you will use something called the macros. Okay, so in Purpose Suite, let me go over the macros only. So in Purpose Suite, see the intruders here. So in the intruder, <coughs> When you send a request here, let's go to, uh, let's look out and go to admin. Uh -huh. no. Now this one stopped responding. Anyway. So macros, if you go to project options in here, you see we have uh, sessions. Now in the sessions, you will see some, something called the macro. A macro is a sequence of one or more requests. You can use macros within session handling rules to perform tasks such as logging into the application, obtaining anti-CSRF tokens. So if you want to test for login tokens cookies or CSRF tokens you would want to use the macros so in the macros you would go to add and here you have this you have you see the list of all requests we have made to the web application now our objective is to make a request to admin slash login but so since we didn't have we didn't we haven't made a request to that page we didn't see it here let's assume that this is the uh you know page we would like to test we click on okay and now we have the macro editor sh up here it's kind of it's a bit it's a piece of work uh, but we will we will make that easier actually now after we have selected the request that we would like to test we can just here make a name for the macro whatever you can name it depending on the scenario i'm gonna leave that for now and click on okay now we are still in the sessions tab so if you go up you see session handling rules here now if you click on edit you see the rule description and you see the scope of the rule now for now your your yeah, your objective here is to define the scope of the macro now the scope normally is to define the intruder only and here you use custom scope in the custom scope you add the url the url is the url you are testing right after you have done that you name the rule and you click on okay just click on okay then you go to cookie jar in the cookie jar you define the cookies in the intruder section not in the proxy section right so what's going to happen now once you run the macro, the macro will assign the cookies and, and the CSRF tokens from the web application and then the intruder will work on guessing the right password or username. That's how it works. But I'm going to leave that to you guys. These kind of topics are kind of sensitive in YouTube. I don't want the video to go down. So that is for the intruder. I hope the information was sufficient and detailed. And that's for the challenge. Now the next one is the other modules and other modules we talk about the encoding the decoder the comparer the sequencer so let's see here what the questions are required and we apply a scenario so base 64 encode the phrase let's start simple so the section is here decoder in the decoder 
we have a pane here to put the inputs. In the input, we put the, the string that we would like to encode or decode. In our example is, it's let's, uh, let's start simple. It's plain text. On the right, we have a couple of tabs. Decode as, encode as, hash, and a smart decode. Smart decode will try to make a guess of what you, of what you are trying to do. Much like uh, purpose with the payload position, right? So here, in the smart decode, if you click on smart decode, nothing happened, right? Because it knew that this string doesn't need a decode, right? It just need an encoding. So this string is a plain text. It doesn't need to be decoded. It's already decoded. That's why smart decode d doesn't work. Now, the question here is to decode this or encode it at page 64. So we go to encode and page 64. This is the string at page 64. Now, if you start from here and click on smart decode, as you can see, uh, let's take this one. Put that here. Smart decode. Uh, did the work. Okay, decode as page 64. It's the other way around. You see the plain text is here. All right, next one. U URL decode this one. So we have uh, URL string we can put that here and we have to decode this we could we, we tried the smart decode and it worked the smart decode actually guessed what you would like to do we would like to decode this into ascii string alternatively you can just use decode and select plain oh no decode as plain the work decode as url yeah it worked uh next one use smart decode to decode this data so sometimes we don't know the type of data we are decoding, so we use the smart decode. Smart decode this. So it is number. Now, encode this phrase. Start with base64 encoding, take the output of this and convert it into ASCII hex. Finally decode the hex string into octal. Okay. Step by step, we first put that here and it's required to encode this as base 64 encode as base 64 okay take the output of base 64 and convert it into ascii hex finally decode the, oh finally encode the hex string to octal okay so this one needs to be ascii hex so we put that as ascii hex here and this one will be as octal this is the final answer right yeah it's right okay now using the decoder for hashing let's see do we have any questions here okay so using decoder what's the sh256 hash sum of this race let's go hashing so we paste this here now for the hashing we have a section called hash we select the hash type sh256 okay you see it's, it's in hex format if you click on text nope now if you decode this as ascii hex mm, not making the right choice encode let's see the question uh, first so what is the sha sum of this one convert this into ascii hex string for the answer for, uh, for the answer to this question all right so this is the output ASCII hex string and this is the corresponding hash so you see we we went from the hex uh, type or the hex representation into an ASCII hex decoder right decoding form and that's why we found the hash now if you type text here and try to decode this as you know it's not gonna work so you go to the hex representation of the hash and then decode that to ASCII hex um wait encode yeah this is it next one sometimes it feels confusing generate the md4 hash sum of the phrase in secret algorithms so in secret algorithms 
hash md4 <coughs> okay then as usual we encode this as ascii hex we take the hash ah base 64 all right all right all right base 64 this is the base 64 the last one okay now read the problem specification below some joker has messed with my ssh key there are four keys in the directory and i have no idea which is the real one the md5 hash sum for my key is this one could you find it for me now make sure to download the task files the task files contains the list of the keys or the ssh keys your task is to find the right key for your guy or for the yeah yeah you know the guy here so how do we do that we have the md5 right so we can put the md5 as a baseline and we can take all of the keys and put them in the decoder here so where are the keys so you see i have the keys here uh, go to desktop so the keys are here key one two three four the one that will work is key three so i'm going to take it as an example so you take the key okay and you try to generate an md5 hash sum of this key so hash md5 and encode this as ASCII hex and you have the hash now compare this hash to the one given here it is the exact same one for practice purposes you will try with all of them but for saving time he would i just went for the exact answer now the comparator no answers to no questions to answer okay then so the, for the comparator and the sequencer they're kind of um, not used too much but you can use them just to comp the comparator actually is a section in perp suite where you compare two pieces of text the first one um, actually shows here and the next one here and you can gonna, you can compare by words or bytes to see the differences as words or as bytes now the sequencer here is used to test the randomness of session cookies and uh, it's kind of advanced so we are gonna go over that in this video we're gonna go over that um, later or in an upcoming task dedicated to sequencer because it's kind of advanced right uh, but in a nutshell in sequencer what you would do here say we want to i hope uh, the machine is still up yeah the machine is up let's take an example yeah let's do it i'm not gonna wait so let's take an example here and go to that target so now if we go to proxy and catch a request all right so we have a request here all right so we want we want a request that contains cookies or um some sort of uh, csrf tokens contact nope support products let's see where uh, we can find such um live capture so admin login let's take this one turn on the proxy forward okay administration login let's follow up here okay so basically here uh, we will test this url with the sequencer okay so the purpose of that if we again catch another request now there is a session cookie here right now if you are in the business of testing web applications right uh, you may be tasked with testing the strength of the session cookies so the purpose with sequencer would come to the rescue what you can do here you can right click and send to sequencer in the sequencer here you see the um, request you can start the live capture and here you will select what you would like to test now in the example here 
we can test the session cookie or the login token but I know you don't see the login token here because it is hidden so your job here is to either test the strength of the cookie or the login token specifically we want to test the entropy or the randomness how random is the token how random is the cookie so uh, it, it helps the tester to give a conclusion about whether the whether these CSRF tokens or these cookies are generated safely and insecure and securely right so they are not predictable so you select the form field login tokens and we can select live capture now sequencer will start making hundreds of requests as you can see to the application and with every request it's going to catch or it is catching the CSRF token now after all this is done I'm gonna just uh, you know click on pause you can analyze after the analysis or you know Persuite will do analysis now on these uh, tokens we have just captured and after the analysis it will give you a report in the report you will see the strength of this uh, you know token analyze now and this is the report overall result the overall quality of the randomness within the sample is estimated to be excellent at a significance level of 1% the amount of effective entropy is estimated to be 110 bits this means that the anti CSRF token actually is strong it can't be predicted with a simple uh, you know uh, cracking or simple testing right we need to do extensive testing to be able to predict the pattern uh, by which the CSRF token is generated but for now the result actually indicates that the CSRF tokens cannot be predicted or guessed it is the entropy or the randomness is excellent that's the purpose of sequencer so now you know how to work on the proxy you know how to work on the intruder the repeater the sequencer decoder and comparator now the left the, the rest is extender and logger the logger actually is just logs requests you, you make to the application extender is to add extensions and to create um, uh, modules with the perp suite api so i guess we arrived to the final to the to the end of the journey and now we're finished with perp suite i hope you found these tutorials helpful and see you in the next video